us. Now joining us on the show now is Dr. Steve Okori, who will be talking about some points made by the president during his nationwide address on August 4th, Sunday, August 1st, uh, 2024, in addressing the agitations of the hashtag and bad governance protesters. You're very much welcome, Dr. Steve. Yeah, thank you for having me. A lot of clamors have been made in the last couple of days for the president to address the nation. Uh, he finally did. However, not exactly what a lot of people expected him to say in the speech. What do you make of uh, the, the president's address to the nation uh, yesterday? Yeah, um, you know, I, I was here like 12 days ago. Yes. Uh, what we talked about, uh, uh, what the government needs to do to quell the anti-government uh, protesters. Yes. And uh, one of the recommendations or strategy that I pointed out was uh, for the president to speak to Nigerians, you know, especially the people or persons that were uh, trying to see how to organize the protest. And um, and if you recall, I specifically said no more than 20 minutes broadcast or speech, yes. it will be fine. And exactly the president spoke for 20 minutes yesterday. And um, after the this yes, the speech a welcome development if you ask me, but uh, it was for me it was late, you know. Uh, perhaps if the president would have spoken before the protest, uh, we would have seen uh, the wanton destruction and the looted of property that followed and the process. Lives. Uh, the speech yes, I, I think uh, we received. Uh, condemnation more. Yes, because we have seen uh, a lot of uh, permanent Nigerians coming out and saying uh, things contrary to what the president said yesterday. Yes. The likes of uh, Wolo Shoyinka. You know, Wolo Shoyinka didn't, didn't say anything at all before the protest, but he has reasons to come and say one or two things about the speech and the uh, family Falana and the other Nigerians. You yes. know, I've been following the news and it's more of uh, people not saying good things about the speech. The people that said one or two things about the speech perhaps were government appointees, you know. Uh, for me, the president's speech yesterday, uh, he didn't uh, really talk about uh, what the protesters were asking for or what led to the protest, you know. One of the things why the, the protest uh, was heard was because of uh, hardship, hunger in the land, you know. And uh, I think that basically two or three factors cost the hunger in the land. Number one is the removal of uh, outright, uh, uh, outright removal of subsidy. Full subsidy. Yes. And of course, you expect that uh, uh, the f uh, price of fuel went uh, over 300 percent. You know. So uh, of course, I affected the prices of other commodities across the country. Exactly. Then um, the, fl the floating of the naira. Of course, it's also a contributory factor. Then, um, very significantly and most importantly, was, is uh, the insecurity uh, situation in the country, where yes. farmers cannot uh, assess their farm. You know, uh, we have a lot of uh, demand now compared to supply of yes. what we have in the market. Uh, average potato basket goes for like fifteen thousand naira. You know, and you know that Plateau is a major uh, producer of Irish potato. You know, so when bandits and terrorists don't allow farmers in Plateau to assess their farm. Of course, you know the outcome or the result. So, um, the president, just what I said, these key things have not addressing security. You know, I know the, one of the reasons is because uh, farmers can't go to their farms and all that. Saying that you are buying a, or you have other for 2,000 tractors, other implements, uh, incentives for farmers and all that. Yes, you can produce that. You can build that on board. Yes. But if farmers, if insecurity does not allow farmers to use these implements, it will be resolved. Now, now let, me, let me take you back to point 11 on the president's speech where he said, and I quote, in the past 14 months, our government has made significant strides in rebuilding the foundation of our economy to carry us into the future of plenty and abundance. On the fiscal side, aggregate government revenues have more than doubled, mm -hmm. hitting over 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024 compared to the first half of 2023 due to our efforts at blocking leakages, 
introducing automation and mobilizing funding creatively without additional burden of the people. End of quotes. Mm. This is quite um, a giant strike by the federal government. Exactly. You know, in 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 making the uh, hitting 9.1 trillion naira in the first half of 2024. However, how does this translate to better living conditions for the ordinary Nigerian? How does this translate to uh, you know people in rural communities feeling safe? when they want to go to their farms, when they want to move about in their communities. Because if you, you mentioned security, most of the security situations that we find in the country are, are mostly in rural communities where you know people are often attacked. So uh, how does this translate or trickle down to the common man to benefit them? That's the question. And uh, this is what we are asking, you know, because uh, the, the people that came out to, to protest, you will discover that uh, they are from the rural communities, you know, and they were mobilized to come towards the where they can be captured via cameras and all that. But basically, people that are affected are people that, doesn't, that don't have a source of uh, income, yes. you know. Most of them are peasant farmers, most of them are just petty traders and the likes. And when you begin to read out all this, you know, yeah, it's a good way, and of course we uh, we were happy when we see source of revenue increasing like that. But at the end of the day, when these allocations are the, uh, distributed to state and to local government, what impact does it make, you know, to the common man, you know? So these are the questions. Now, are they, these funds are they being monitored, you know? Because we are in a country where state governors. Uh, do anyhow. They, 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 they are emperors of their states. You know, if you ask me, they are lords and masters. These friends get to them, and then the federal government doesn't have any, any right to begin to no, I mean, it's a good thing that the local government areas now have autonomy, so they are not necessarily directly at the mercy of the government. state governments. Yes. Now, I think it's one of the achievements we have to give a, a kudos to uh, the President Tinubu yes. for achieving that, because we've, we've seen successive governments that have tried to see how to make uh, see that local government becomes uh, autonom autonomous but it's very difficult but we have seen where the uh, uh, Tinubu's government have achieved that now local government uh, 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 they are very close to the grass to the grass you know. yes. so with that I think we will begin to see some uh, effects of, of what the government is trying to do by reaching out to the grassroots you know um, uh, just the way we've been talking about local government autonomy we just hope that the state governors will not still derive other means or try to see how to collect these monies from from uh, from local government chairman. Now, now, Dr. Steve, in as much as the president's speech, um, you know, touched on a lot of concerns in the country, economic concerns, security concerns, uh, real estate concerns, housing deficits in the country, a lot of things. However, some people or most people are of the opinion that. He did not actually address the needs of the protesters, the ten point needs of the protesters mm -hmm. that they had initially laid out. Yeah. So, in as much as it's a good speech, it wasn't a good speech in the right direction. Don't you think so? You know, I've said it in one of my remarks when I said the speech welcome development, but for me, I said it was late. You know, but having said that. Um, there are a lot that we need to look out for in the speech. Now, we're talking about cost of governance here. Um, I, I watched uh, Governor Ubasani of Kaduna State on one of the assistance television yes. stations, where he talked about this is one year plus. As governor, he called his commissioners that no certain amounts that comes to them every month for as a bonus or something that about a million or so, yes. he had to remove it that no official car has been bought for any serving commissioner that he appointed. The governor, deputy governor, no official car himself, no official car. You know, they have tried to see how to reduce cost of governance. And he tried to speak to his uh, commissioners and his cabinet members to see reasons why they should forfeit certain bonuses that should officially come to them. And they should deal with the government that they have a lot of burdens, you know, that they are paying four points, four points over four, four billion dollars as debt, you know. You know, so why wouldn't we have a forest government that should think in that direction? 
And if you are telling the people to be patient, people that are coming on national television asking the Nigerians to be patient have source of income. They are going to pay this. You know? So if you are telling Nigerians to be patient, that a lot is involved, that you will come to them at the end of the day as dividends, why won't you not forfeit your own source of income? You know, as a political appointee, there's nothing wrong. We saw the National Assembly precisely the House of Reps. They had to take out like fifty percent of their monthly salary and uh, for the next six months to see how to cushion the effects of what we are talking about here. We are talking about cost of governance that is high. We have uh, the highest number of uh, ministers in this government. There's another one coming on board, Ministry of uh, Livestock Development, and uh, and we see all the brand new cars. And you are telling Nigerians that they should be patient. Talk. If we really want to see that we are really committed to what we are doing, we should, we should see ourselves as servants, not as leaders. They are servants. They have been uh, either appointed or elected to come and serve the people. So we see f flashy cars in your convoys, brand new cars, and we are talking about cost of cost of governance, and we are not seeing that the government is reducing cost of governance. Well, this needs this to be practical. It needs to be real for Nigerians to see and be convinced that we really have. They really have leaders that really want to take their problems on their head and not in their various pockets. Well, well, well at this point, I, I believe I speak the minds of many Nigerians when I say uh, th that the president perhaps just did a rehash of you know old policies and, and the rest, which we all know the 70,000 naira new minimum wage, talking about the, um, the new hope city that is going to cut across six geopolitical zones, the CNG buses that the federal government has promised, uh, you know, co tax cuts on food importation. All of these are policies that the federal government has made in recent times. However, the main crux of the matter, which is the protest, yes. was not indirectly addressed mm -hmm. in his speech. Yeah. However, instead, it was a brief brush, a surface level brush mm -hmm. of the uh, protest that he mm -hmm. held nationwide. Now that the president has done this, do you think that perhaps it has stirred up more agitations instead of quelling, instead of quelling it in the first place? Yes. I think it has stirred more agitation because if you see uh, headlines of newspapers this morning, you see a lot of Nigerians talking about the, the speech, you know, and uh, all, all, all the headlines I've seen, they tend to, to be against what the president came to say because he did not touch on the real issues. Number one, if, supposing I was the president's uh, advisor, yes. the very moment he stepped on that stage on the 29th of May, he would have said that fellow Nigerians, as I've been sworn in today, the budget that I came to meet, subsidy was not captured. Rather, subsidy was captured up to June ending yes. and all that. But what I'm going to do, the moment I inaugurate the National Assembly, I'm going to submit a supplementary budget that will capture subsidy till the end of 2023. Are you listening to me? Yes. Because all the uh, candidates of the various political parties in the last election, they said they were going to do something, you know, but all of them had their strategies on how to go about it. Which, which obviously is different from what the president did. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, so, kicking it off on the first day after his swearing. Yes. So I would have said that, that I, I didn't need a budget that captured the subsidy. I'm going to see how to present a supplementary budget that will take subsidy till the end of 2023. With that, I will prepare the minds of Nigerians that at the end of 2023, you know, subsidy is going to be removed completely. Between that May 29th to December, the CNG buses, all these policies that he's talking about now, you will have had time to begin to see how to implement them, you know, roll them out. You know, that time, Nigerians would have been prepared that, yes, they, they, they would have been prepared and they would have sort of acclimatized to the CNG buses. Exactly. So if you take out some subsidy, yeah. it, it wouldn't be so difficult for them to ease into uh, that um, system. Exactly. Now, the actual remover, uh, of course, cost a lot of things, you know, and that is the problem we are in now, you know. So I, I think that the, he would have done that, you know, but uh, this is where we are faced with and uh, 
some other things that I think that we have done before the removal of subsidy. But my worry about this subsidy removal is that they made us to understand that certain individuals were benefiting corruptly from yeah, that from subsidy. subsidy. Now, who are these individuals that were benefiting corruptly from subsidy? And you think, or we think that these individuals are moving on the state, that agencies of government that are serving the responsibility of uh, prosecuting individuals that involve themselves in such uh, a crime or something, cannot, they are beyond the state. And because of that reason, because of this certain individuals, you are trying to remove subsidy. We should deal with the issues. We are those individuals. You know, as a Nigerian sitting here, the only thing I think I benefit from government, because I work for myself, the only thing I think I benefit from government is the subsidy that government claims that they pay yes. on my behalf. I go to a private uh, hospital, I have a, a, a burial, I don't uh, benefit from public water supply, I, you know, so, I mean, this is quite the reality for many Nigerians. Yes. A lot of people would say that the only thing that they outrightly and directly benefit from the federal government is or before the removal of first subsidy now, subsidy now was being able to go to a petrol filling station and buy for at a subsidized rate. Right. So now that first subsidy has been removed, it's almost like the federal government does nothing for the ordinary Nigerians because for in its sense is one thing that everybody benefits from. Exactly. The, the, the taxi driver benefits from it, the commuter benefits from it. Yeah. You, as a personal car owner, you also benefit from it. So it touches everybody. But now that it's gone, we are all at the mercy of the federal government and whatever they throw at, at the populace. That's what people, uh, you know, have shared their thoughts on. Exactly. And that's why people are complaining. You know, what the government does, does the way we've been talking about it here, is the subsidy that they provide. Yes. You know, instead of me getting, or Nigerians getting full at the rate of... Uh, uh, a thousand naira plus, for instance, we are getting it for, for let's say five hundred or four hundred naira. You know, so that is what the government does. So those individuals that the government gave us impression that were the reasons why subsidy had to go. Now, now, now I, I like when when you mentioned that there were some cabals that you know were pointed at as the cause of the uh, problem in the oil and gas sector. However. That cabal that you mentioned have also been made public, you know, in the recent um, uh, rifts that has rocked the NNPCL and other refineries. There's actually a story of interest in the leadership newspaper where it says that 120 reps yes. reject calls for carries removal as uh, GCEO of uh, NNPCL. Yeah. Is he perhaps one of the cabals that uh, you are insinuating have? Uh, stopped the growth of the oil and gas industry in the, uh, in the country. Absolutely. You see, I have questions to ask. Now, we have refineries that the government, they are interested in the turnaround maintenance. Yes. Rather than making it work. What is stopping us from making these refineries work? What's the problem? We have refineries that are more than there. Government is interested in Maintenance because they make money from the tunnel maintenance. The money that you hear that they service this uh, uh, refineries with, you will marvel. You know, now we have Dangote refinery that is out there to see that Nigerians don't buy fuel at the rate that we buy because it will be locally refined here. What's the problem? The uh, chairman, the, uh, uh, what's the full name now? NNPRD or something? The NNDPRD, uh, I'm a fellow. Yes. I watched him on TV saying that uh, uh, trying to see how to uh, reduce the quality of uh, Dangote's uh, 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 production, you know, and many carry was standing by his side. So it means that they did it in commerce. Working in synergy. Exactly, that's the point. And a lot of committees have been to Dangote's refinery Qu quite and they came out with a commendable uh, result. Uh, quite notably, the, the, the uh, president of the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, Senator Godfrey Lopabio, has, well, during the, the height of the rift, made a statement that is quite commendable. He said that uh, those people fighting Dangote refineries 
and the oil sector are enemies of the state and are sabotaging the growth of the oil and gas industry. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know what it is. Exactly. How can we move them out of the system? Considering the fact that about 120 reps members are rejecting calls for his removal. But my brother, the military man has has been there for a, a long period of time. You know, the president from the days of NNPC to the days of NNPC. Exactly. But we have not seen any difference since the man has been there. You know, whether it is a cabal thing and all that, the president is a listening president. When somebody is trying to sabotage his government, you know, the person should be taken out and bring somebody that is ready to walk. Yes. The man is there to deliver. You know, he said on in, in his speech yesterday that the box starts from his table. Now, when we see every committee that has been to Tangote Refinery came out with a very commendable result that the place is okay, the place is good to go and all that. So what is the problem? That indigenous people will come and see how to uh, bring down an indigenous uh, 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 company in Nigeria here. It means we let these things happen, we begin to ask questions. Why? And you, are, you, are, you, you prefer to bring in uh, foreign investors to come and invest because of your interest? I am pretty sure that maybe uh, perhaps their interest was not captured in the Dangote arrangement and all that, and that's why they're trying to say how to sabotage the man's effort. I see worry in Dangote's face each time he's on television talking about he has invested so much there. Of course, of course, you know that his uh, banker's uh, money is not. It, he doesn't have other resources. Most of those resources were borrowed. Yes. You know, and the, the, the company needs to run for the for 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 that to be made as well. See, exactly. So why are they sabotaging the man's effort? Well, well, let's 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 um, move away from that a little bit, and so we don't digress too much, and okay. back to the nationwide protest. Mm -hmm. uh, when the protest began on the first of August, we saw um, violence rocking major parts of the country, especially the northern parts of of Nigeria, uh, in places like Kano, in places like Yobe. There was even a bomb blast in Maiduguri, in Kaduna. There was you know mass uprising, and somehow the northern elders forum have come out to say that there was no mention of insecurity in the north by the president during his nationwide address yesterday and we all know how it went down in the northern parts of of the country uh similarly afeniferi is saying that the president is sticking to anti masses policy still commenting on his uh nationwide broadcast mm. let's first take up uh, the statement by the Northern Elders Forum where they said that the president is not speaking on the insecurity in the north. What do you make of this? And why is he silent? Uh, insecurity is a, a national thing. It's, so, it's something that, uh, that is caught up with all the states and uh, the six geopolitical zones. So it's not about uh, the north alone, you know. And uh, you see, when this uh, uh, political or uh, non-political organization uh, talk. I, I want them, I feel that they should speak from the perspective of a, a nationalist uh, view, you know. They should see Nigeria as uh, an entity that belongs to all of us. They shouldn't begin to, because yes, they are everywhere consultative forum, yes, but insecurity is a general thing, yes. you know, so they shouldn't be specific about the north, 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 you understand? They should be patriotic when they are making certain comments, you know, that's the point I want to see there. Now, um, the president for me, just the way we've been talking, uh, I feel that uh, he's a man that means well. But I, I think that certain persons in his government are trying to see how to uh, sabotage the man's effort. That speech was prepared by somebody. Yes. You know. So the speechwriter would have taken his time or her time to see how to capture the real thing. You know. Well, perhaps written by somebody, but directed by the president. Yeah. Th there has to be a directive by the president on what the speech should capture. I, I, I don't think the president's speech writer would outrightly write what is on his mind mm. for the president to read. It has to come from the president's mind. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I agree with you, but it's not the content. The headings, perhaps, perhaps the president would have looked at it, but the content itself. Know, itself the speech writer we will now begin to look at the headings based on what the president they are decided to go. But the content is now left for the speechwriter to begin to see how to. But uh, uh, unfortunately, I saw that the speech leaked. 
you know, people about, about, about 24 hours. Yes, people had that speech before yeah. the president read it. Uh, I, I, I was on uh, the WhatsApp platform where uh, the speech was shared, and as the president was reading his speech 7 a.m., I was trying to see if the what was the shared speech was correct. Yes, and exactly what the president was saying. So, it means there's no confidentiality. Something is wrong. I think the presidency needs to probe that. They need to investigate that. Why should the president's speech leak 24 hours before? We saw that during the before time of... Yes, we saw that during the time of uh, president Bo, former President Buhari. Yes. I don't think... There's no confidentiality. You know, at least the speech should have come out after the president's broadcast. So, I think there's something wrong, you know. In the government, the government, the president needs to look at that, you know, and 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 find the mole in you know in the president. Yes. Well, still staying with the hashtag and bad governance protest, uh, following the president's address to the nation yesterday, the fourth of August, protesters have once again come out to occupy Abuja and other parts of the country, as seen captured on the front page of the Daily News Hub this morning. On the front page of the Daily News Hub, it reads with the headline story, Hashtag and Bad Governance. Protesters Sean Tinubu's plea, re-strategize, mobilize to occupy Abuja today. As Shoenka Falano, protest organizers knock president's speech. Similarly, on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct, you'd find again, Hashtag and Bad Governance protest. Uh, and hashtag and bad governments. Protesters defy FG as demonstration enters day five with renewed vigor. Dr. Steve, yes. this is day five. Hmm. There is heavy presence of security forces in the FCT. I, for one, while driving to work today, you know, saw a lot of military checkpoints, a lot of armored vehicles, military personnel on the streets of Abuja, and I believe the scene is the same across the nation. Like I mentioned earlier, the president's speech, instead of quelling the agitations, has instead fueled it the more. Mm. When do we see an end to this? Is it anytime soon, or are we seeing an escalation that is probably going to be beyond the Nigerian state? You know, the organizers of the protest gave a 10 days notice. It was 10 days uh, period, period for the, for the, for the protest. protest to uh, carry on. Yes. Um, you know, protest is uh, a, a way to express grievance, yes. especially when uh, some policies of government is inconsistent with uh, uh, the citizens need. Yes. There's nothing wrong with protest. And when I see the organizers or some spokespersons say, yes, there must be protest, there must be protest. It's a constitutional thing. It's a way of uh, just the freedom of expression. But my worry and my worry and concern before the protest was what's, what played out during the protest. Looting of personnel and the government properties. Yes. You know. The organizers of this protest would have passed this message to uh, Nigerians that uh, were, ready, were ready to come out. To come and protest. Yes. Let them know that it is protest and it's peaceful. There are certain things that comes with the peaceful protest. One, you don't obstruct the movement of other Nigerians. You protest, you block the road. It is wrong. As seen in Lagos. It is wrong. You block the road completely. It's not everybody that is protesting. You pave way for people that want to go about their businesses. Businesses were shut down. One, because uh, out of fear for their properties not to be looted. But despite, that, despite the fact that they lost there are shops and all that. Thieves, hoodlums amongst them. There was still mass looting, mm. especially in Kano. Kano. In, in Kano, the, there were pictures of you know people looting stores and offices. People had chairs on their heads, AC compressors. Uh, computers. I mean, uh, as funny as it might sound, but although not funny, I saw someone with a, a, a signboard. <laughs> what are you uh, exactly are you doing with the signage? You didn't see the one that was pulling down uh, the traffic light. He didn't need to bring it down by all means. Wrecking have up to government establishments and, and uh, infrastructure. But that is another protest, you know. For me, along the line, the protest now became a riot. I've always mentioned that there is a thin line between protest and riot. Mm -hmm. 
and somehow during the first day of the protest we saw a crossover from protest to rioting mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. most parts exactly. of the country exactly. and, and i've asked other analysts who have you know graced this show how do we draw the line between the protesters and the rioters? Now I throw it to you again, Dr. Mm. Steve. Yeah. How do we draw the line between protesters and rioters and how do we address them adequately? Now, there's a team that doesn't even say between uh, protesters, when it has to be protest and riot. Once the, the protest that is supposed to be seen to be peaceful becomes violent. Yes. And from violence, it enters into uh, the stage of looting properties and all that. That's not riot. You know. Now, the organizers of protests should see that they educate their followers. Education, you know, you sensitize them. Yes. You know, with that no looting of government properties or private properties, no destruction of government properties or private properties, you must have to protest along on one side of the road. Allow other Nigerians to pass. You don't obstruct movement of people. That's a peaceful protest. But the moment you get into the point where tires are being burnt on the road, cars can't pass. For for instance, that very the first day of protest, I was I came to my office, did one or two things. I was returning home. I from nowhere I just saw boys enter the road my, in front of me with stones. I became agitated. I mean, that could have easily gone very badly. You know, the moment they approached me with stones, I was thinking that my windshield was going to go off. The moment they approached me, they came and they said, show us love, show us love. And they, I had to give them money, you know, to save myself. And that's not a protest. That's not a protest anymore. You know, so I think that when organizers of protests like this come on air, they need to take the message to their people, followers, and tell them that this is how to go. And that's why the federal government complained about not knowing the leaders of this protest. It was leaderless, if you ask me. There was no clear uh, indication. indication that we were the leaders or we are the leaders. But subsequently, we, we saw human rights activists and, and the likes coming out to protest with the protesters, thereby confirming mm -hmm. some speculations that, you know, they had leaders. Yeah, but, you know, now the president is asking for dialogue who has come up to say we are the leaders and we're coming for a dialogue nobody nobody not nobody yet yes no but this is like 24 hours gone and we expect that uh, people should come we have seen protests where we saw the likes of wale shoyenka uh Femi falana and the likes yes. you know heading protests you know when they say okay leaders come let's talk you see people like that will come confront the government and they will discuss but right now we aren't saying anybody the only person I see is uh, one by uh, SN uh, and or somebody like yeah. that. Apart from having seen anybody, you just see factions of uh, uh, or pockets of different groups, you know, making comments. And, but that's not uh, leadership, if you ask me. You know, when it has to do with a national protest like this. But, but th there's something that might interest you as uh, seen in one of the uh, northern states of the country where um, some protesters were seen with the Russian flag waving you know the russian flag as they um, protested on the streets the president however has also made a statement uh asking them not to allow enemies to use them to truncate the democracy yeah what do you think of this you see i was wondering when i saw that you know russian flag in the midst of nigerians protesting and it gives me some some worry is it that uh, we are having some uh, foreign infiltration in in our activities on our affairs. Well, con considering the fact that the um, Association of Sahel States, mm. or Alliance of Sahel States, uh, which recently pulled out of ECOWAS, mm. is strongly backed by Russia. Russia yeah. uh, is this a message being sent to the president in, in subtlety? Now, anything is possible. Anything is possible. And uh, for, for those set of people, I must have asked a uh, big provision for a Russian flag to be used during the protest. Then it means that something is wrong. Yes. And it calls for 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 serious investigation. Yes. You know, we have our intelligence agencies and all that. And I think uh, it should be a sense of uh, worry and concern for this government. And we need serious investigation yes. in that so that we can unravel the reasons why we should have uh, or we had a Russian flag in the course of uh, protesting 
about what concerns us. Yes. You know, yeah, of course, that's what you said. We have uh, Russia now in Niger and these other countries that have pulled out from the ECOWAS. So something is wrong. And I, I don't think the government should take it lightly. They, they need to look at, critically look at that, so that we should know where that came from. And beyond that, the, uh, the president's speech talked about um, uh, politicians that uh, have lost elections, kind of, and that are trying to see how uh, to come in there via protest. Uh, yeah, you see, basically it's not about uh, these same politicians. Uh, the fact is, Nigerians are hungry. There might be some undertone of these uh, uh, politicians that uh, lost elections. Uh, Peter Obi, I saw him talking about protest is uh, constitutional right and all that. Now, there are some Nigerians there that have lost their properties. Yes. Who's going to pay? Is it the government or these politicians that appeared on TV to uh, back the protest? Who's going to pay for that? Are they going to be left like that? Well, well as, as, part of, as part of the uh, president's speech, he mentioned that resources are stretched thin mm -hmm. as they move to, um, you know, make uh, provisions for the reconstruction of some of the infrastructure that have been uh, wrecked by the protesters yes. in the last few days. Is the private uh, individuals that lost their own properties will they be captured in that? Well, well, we would have to we would have to expect some sort of statement from the FG in the coming days to see if the resources that they are talking about will be extended to the private sector as well. How do they not value their properties? That's a big question. So a lot is wrong, you know, and uh, I think that uh, uh, what has happened is enough for the government to see how to sit up you know, try to see how to uh, make these provisions available beyond promissory notes or beyond what we are seeing in the paper. You know, we need to be practical about it. Yes. You know, let Nigerians see, let them feel it. That's the point. Policies, yes. Implementation is another thing. How well are they really serious about doing one thing? Yes. You know, these uh, policies, you know, because you know, implementation is one of our challenge. You know, implementation is one of our challenge in this part of the world. I watched the Minister of Agri and Food Security on channels yesterday, you know. Uh, brilliant remarks when she was asking him questions. But I just I was just watching, I said, hope all this that he's saying on TV will be brought on, on, on the ground for people to see, for people to feel. Yes. You know. And there was nothing. We are still hoping, he said, before the, the end of this year, things will change, prices of goods will go down and all. Then beyond that, there's this federal... Consumer rights, uh, that uh, consumer protection, protection council. Yes. What is that agency going to do? You will see quality going down, quantity going down, price high, and yet nothing is being done. Nothing is being done. I mean, in, in, in the case of many commodities that we find across the country, especially edible uh, products, you'd find that the quality is, is substandard now, the quantity has reduced, yet the prices keep skyrocketing on a daily basis. What? That agency of government. You buy toothpaste, but when you push it up, it's half. It's air. <laughs> you understand? Yes. How well are they protecting consumers? Quality is down, quantity is down, the price is high, there should be justification for it. Yes. You know, so I think all these agencies of government, I think they're not, they're not just there for, for there, for just being there. How well are they doing? How well are they functioning? Are they really carrying out the tax on Monday when we started with? Well, well, Dr. Steve, um, to get your thoughts in closing now, yes. uh, the, the, the protest has begun. Mm -hmm. It's day five. More agitations are expected, and today in particular, um, I believe security forces or agencies are well saddled in preparation for whatever mayhem that may come up as a result of the protest. Mm. The address that um, the protesters have been waiting for by the by the president has been made, mm -hmm. and I don't think any address will be made anytime mm -hmm. soon mm -hmm. again. No, no, no. no. What should we expect in the coming days? Now, I, I think the protesters are, are ready to carry on that protest for the period of time they have said, 10 days. This is the fifth day, and I think they want to exhaust it. I think it is important for the protesters now to begin to see how to find who their leaders are. 
Now, after the 10 days, if they really want to exhaust it, yes. after the 10 days, then these leaders, from, they can bring up their leaders from the 36 states. That's 36 persons. Plus one national person and all that. That would make, make it 37. For the president to see 37 persons is not too much. To go and see him and clearly spell out that, okay, you need hardship, hunger. How do you intend to address this? Uh, first subsidy remover. We saw where the Kenyan president removed subsidy. And when he saw the agitation and all that, he had and to, the hardship, to revert on his policy. He had to revert. It doesn't make you a weak president. If you do something, he had the pleas yes. of the people. It doesn't make you a weak president. Yeah. You know. So if you decide, okay, for hearing this and as a listening president, I will take out, I will, I will return subsidy for a period of time to see that the things that we have decided to put in place that should cushion the removal of they subsidy, are, they are put in place. They are put in place and they are on ground. Then I will go back and remove the subsidy. There's nothing wrong. It doesn't make you a weak president. You know. Well, let's, let's, let's hope that in the coming days uh, the president does this and if perhaps he or any member of his cabinet is listening, let's, uh, fingers crossed, let's hope that they take off words of advice from you, Dr. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program this morning and for reviewing uh, most of our dealings uh, today. Thank you for having me. Well, that has been Dr. Steve Okori sharing his thoughts with us concerning the president's speech uh, yesterday addressing the nation about the hashtag and bad governance protests that have rocked the country. Now, it's